Hi there, and welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Olette and Casey Berman. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Uh, so happy to have you back to the Love or Leave the Law podcast. Uh, Casey here, and Adam and I are going to dive right into step number two um, that Adam has detailed uh, in his work in an ABA webinar that he did recently around how to begin to love the law again, to refresh uh, your interest and love and connection with, with your legal practice. Um, please check the last episode we just did. Um, we really dive into some uh, kind of intangibles and touchy-feely things, but really important stuff that we need to do to really set the groundwork um, to, to jump into what we're doing now. The, in the last episode was around really doing some exercises into why you went to law school in the first place, why you became a lawyer in the first place. Really difficult to do, stuff we may not want to do. We'd rather turn on the TV or do something else. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you follow what Adam talks about, it's to really identify what it is that really drove you to law school in the first place, uh, to help people, to, to speak, to, to do the legal writing, to be the adult in the room, to be whatever it is. Um, that then gives that direction, uh, that, that, that core direction as to what it is you want to do. And then you can kind of shed um, the other things and, and delegate. Extremely important. Um, and Adam gives a lot of uh, direction as how to do it. Please check the last episode. So with that in mind, now Adam, let's get into some tactics because the second step um, of love and law is to kind of an obvious point, but to get really organized. What, what do you mean by that? Well, first, let me have you define what does it mean to, have, to be the adult in the room? Because I think some people may not understand that. And let's start with that. Let me yeah. have you, you've never told us what that means. I know what it means, but I want yeah. you to explain that to us. And then we're going to jump into some of these tips okay. here. So please tell us what does that mean? I, yeah. So one thing, okay. So before we get into that, one thing that, that I've, I've done a lot of work um, in helping people leave the law, but I think this is applicable to those who want to stay in the law, is that we shy away from finding those skills or wanting to really identify those skills that don't seem that tangible to us. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about what, what should a lawyer do? Well, they should write briefs. They should argue cases. They should get the settlements. They need to uh, do these things that are very tangible. And I see that with people who want to leave the law too. I need to make money. I need to close deals. I need to build a product. I need to deliver on time. But what's really interesting is that nowadays, whether it's in the law, whether it's outside the law, there are, are intangible skills are actually in many ways um, as valuable or, or more, in, it can be even be more important. It could be storytelling. Mm -hmm. It could be issue identifying. It could be putting out fires. It could be being the psychologist. Um, and so what I mean, what I also bucket in there is being the adult in the room. There is a huge value that I think attorneys can uh, uh, provide by really being kind of a sense of calm, by being the person that takes executives or whoever else. They may be warring, they may be confused, and really finding what the issue is. I've seen it time and time again where the attorney is the advisor, is the consigliore, is the mm -hmm. person that over time can really help otherwise smart professional executives to, to come to a resolution. To, to deal with the, the politics and so on. So that's what I mean Perfect. by the adult in the Perfect. room. And most of us would say, well, yeah, I do it all the time. Or really? I get paid for that? Really, Casey? That's a job requirement? And, and you know, as you listen to episode one, and Adam, thanks you for, for calling this out, it's these kind of soft and tangible skills that I think in our information age, in our technology-empowered age, are extremely important, yeah. and uh, you can be highly compensated for, but for the most part, provide a huge amount of value to people. Yeah, I agree. I'm glad. I just wanted everybody yeah. to understand that, uh, that idea, <laughs> because you talk about it a lot, and I just want to make sure everybody's it's on the huge. same page. It's huge. So thank you. Thank um, you. Okay. Now back to tactics. Okay. We've talked all about this in the last one. I just went on a tangent about, about these kind of skills and identifying. Once an attorney does these exercises, you know, kind of gets whether it's a hard skill or a soft skill, Adam, about like, okay, this is what I really enjoy doing as an attorney. Now what? For me, I, I looked at what was happening in my world as a lawyer and saw I did not have very much life balance. You know, I, 
I had a relationship at the time and, and I wasn't able to spend a lot of time with her because uh, I was working too much. And, um, you know, I, I had a few, a couple birds at home and I wasn't around a lot. And these birds were getting kind of pissed off. They were, they wanted to be out of the cage and stuff. And, and I ended, ended up giving them away because I, I couldn't be home a lot. And I'm, yeah. I'm looking at my life and I'm going, what am I doing? I'm living at the office. I'm working six days a week. A lot of days I'm working 12 hour days. It's dark when I get to work. It's dark when I get home. I am exhausted as can be. This is part of where the delegation came in. It's like, I got to start delegating. I can't do all of this myself. So we talked about that in the key number one in the last episode. But as I started realizing there's got to be some balance in my life that I create, I, I understood at a deep level, I have to figure out what's going on in my world, get organized, and find ways of, of uh, the techniques of um, managing my time. I, I, I know yeah. that's a, a word that's been used and played out a lot, but you only have the same amount of time as everybody else. We all have 24 hours in the day. And yeah. I found this book and I've talked about it before and I'll continue to talk about it because it's something that's a game changer and it changed my world and it's called getting things done. Yeah. If you've listened to our episodes and you have not read this book, how can I yell at you somehow? I'm not sure, but I'm doing it now in a nice way. <laughs> you need to yeah. get this book. They have it on audible. They have it on, and we'll put the links down there. They have it on Kindle. They've got it on eBooks. It's all over the place and it's, I've never found anything better. And I've studied this. I've studied this intently. Yeah. I've had every kind of planner that you've ever thought about. I've used any kind of to-do list and software. I, and I continue to look at them because I really want to know what's the cutting edge stuff out there. And what I love is that we've been, people have been talking about getting organized for my whole life. I don't know ever. how long, a hundred years, 50 years, sure. two, I don't know. And there's still new books coming out. There's still, we're still talking about it. It's still really difficult, even more so with in the, in the connected world that we live in now. But this book is, is more than anything timeless because the stuff it talks about, it's genius. And so David Allen, I, I give him lots of perks and, and I, I love him. I, I, if I could hug the man, I would because he totally changed my life and I still use his principles every single day. I don't care if it's a work day or a time off day. I, I do the weekly and daily planning like yeah. he talks about. I do the, the brain dumps like he talks about every quarter. Um, I, I don't treat my inbox like a to-do list. And I take time and I look at everything going on and I make sure I'm doing high level stuff. And I'm always looking at what can I delegate out of any of these yeah. things? What shouldn't I be working on still to this day? And I will continue to do that because when you move into different work, like Casey and I are doing, when you're in not practicing law day to day, you are doing new stuff. And so I'm having to look at this stuff with a, a different eye. I'm looking at it under a microscope in ways that I haven't in a long time because I knew my world as a yeah. lawyer but let's break a few of these down. So that. yeah, you, you just touched on a few points. I think go dig into detail. Those, those would be really helpful for the listeners uh, as, as uh, to do's they can take away from our talk. We're going to talk about to do's and then we're going to end this episode um, talking about why you should do it and the benefits yeah. and, and really what I was able to get from this process. And I've talked about these processes, processes, whatever you want to call it in my, um, the uh, mastermind groups that I've been in. I've been in multiple mastermind groups for businesses and it's a great thing. And I, I have a platform that we're going to be rolling out uh, on how you can be, a, have a mastermind group for attorneys and share ideas and uh, open up the group to like-minded people. But so as I start sharing this stuff, these tips I'm going to give you here in a minute, um, I, but you need to read the book regardless. See, there's too much that we can't Getting even cover. Getting things all. done. Getting things yeah. done. And we'll, we'll have pop, pop the picture of it and we'll have links for it. But as I'm talking about these things, there's another guy in my group and his name was Alan and he, he's really organized as well, but he's talking to everybody else and he's saying, you know, this could take you a couple of years to implement it. And I looked at him and I said, maybe. It took me about a month to implement this stuff. And really what this comes down to for everybody in a nutshell is you have to put the time in to do the initial stuff. What's the initial stuff? A brain dump. What is that? Take a piece of paper. And if you've already heard this on this podcast, do it 
if you haven't done it. Listen to it again. Repetition is how we learn, right? Take a pad of paper. I usually use my iPhone. Walk around with Evernote open, and I walk around my house. Every room, floor of the house, every room, and I put down every single thing that I think I need to do in the house. I go into my office. Every single cubby, every little, every, every file, open up everything and get it out of your head. David yeah. Allen calls it your psychic RAM. We have RAM in our heads and that RAM will remind us of shit that we need to do all day, every day. And a lot of times it happens in the middle of the night. Oh, oh my God, you wake up out in the middle of a, a deep sleep. I forgot to do this. I forgot to call this person. I, who wants to do that? I don't. I don't want to have any part of that anymore. I never want to forget something. And especially with the looming malpractice problem that we all have hanging over our heads as lawyers, um, this can help you to not get sued. Isn't yeah. that a good tip? But brain dump. So one of the things that he talks about in this book is if you never clean the shelves in the garage, one of those things on your list, right? you won't keep reminding yourself of it every time you walk by the shelves in the garage. Because once you get it out of your head and you get it down somewhere that you can look at, and he talks about weekly plan, which we're going to get into in a second, get it out of your head, get it somewhere. Then yeah. it's there. And even if you never do it, if you never clean those shelves and you die with those shelves being dirty, at least it's not in your head. It's not yeah. clogging up your psychic ram. And I did this for the first time many years ago and it was like a big weight lifted off my back. It was unbelievable. And so then I took all this stuff, personal, business, client files, blah, blah, blah. And I, then I organized it into a program. It's called yeah. OmniFocus. They only make it for the Macintosh. And it's a getting things done based software uh, where you list things based on where you're going to do them. So if, you're gonna, if it's something you're going to do in the office, if it's something you're going to do on your computer in your office, you can... Sit down at the computer in the office say, what do I got to do from the computer in the office today? What do I have to do from my phone? What calls do I have to make? If I'm at home, errands, running errands. Right. It's so genius. It's so genius. And so the brain dump then gets compacted into various aspects of our lives. And it, this really helped me because, you know, the stuff at home is important. But the business stuff to me was more important. I didn't really care if I cleaned the garage, you know. And yeah. I, I could hire somebody to do some of that stuff too. You can delegate that as well. But... Then I took all the stuff from business and I started to take it and put it into projects. And when you take it and put it into projects, you can take these projects and review them every week in your weekly plan. Um, I usually did it on a Friday late in the day. Sometimes I did it on a Sunday night. Every once in a while, if I didn't have time to do either of those days, I would do it first thing in the morning, Monday. I'd come into work early on a Monday. I would go through the weekly review. Yeah. Here's all the stuff I've got to do. And start to look at, well, what is it that I need to get done this week? That's what right. is urgent? And it got to the point where I didn't have anything urgent anymore, Casey, because I was planning my weeks and my days from these brain dumps and keeping these lists organized. And he advocates having an inbox in your office. A lot of us have inboxes. Everything to do that you need yeah. to do, put it in a piece of paper and put it in this inbox. Now I have an inbox in my phone. OmniFocus has an inbox. You click it and you can dictate, da, 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 and everything goes in this inbox. It's right. a virtual inbox, but I still have an inbox in my office, even though I don't have an office where anybody else works now. It's just my office, yeah. and I still have stuff in that inbox that I take every week, and I put into my weekly plan, right. uh, whether I'm going to do it this week or next week, and, and you can utilize technology to do this a whole lot better than I used to do it when I first read this book, and it was just at that point, uh, I had a I don't know, PDA of some sort, and it didn't really work all that great, but now the technology works. And in, in future episodes, we're going to talk about planner pads and philo faxes and day timers and <clears throat> the online versions of a lot of these things and the pros and cons of them and what you may want to look at when choosing something like this. Yeah. And we will deep dive into daily and weekly plans, and I'm going to show you on OmniFocus at some point in shorter videos that won't be episodes with Casey and I, how I use these kinds of things. But Brain dump, weekly and daily plan. So first thing you get in the morning, five minutes, take a look at that weekly plan. What is it that I need to get done today? Hopefully you'll get to the point where there isn't urgent stuff. There's and you not know what, what's interesting stuff. is you can, one, get bogged down in what tool to use, and that's great, but then you're just thinking about gadgets and what's the best way, and that's not really helping. 
Um, so insight on that, but really keeping it simple. And I think the other, the other area that I really like is, you know, you talk about waking up in the morning uh, as an artist, as a creative, and writing your ideas out. And it's the early morning before everyone wakes up, the birds are chirping, and you're writing your novel or your poem. And, you know, we hear a lot about that, and I think it's very important. But the same can be uh, thought of when it comes to not necessarily writing the next great novel or your poem, but when it comes to writing your to-do list. And, you know, getting up early, uh, having that energy, having that clear focus, and really using that to not only be creative and, and mindful, but also really just thinking critically and in a creative way about what it is you need to get done. I think it's, it's really important to, it sounds obvious, but it's really important to set that time as opposed to just say, yeah, 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 I have it in my head. Uh, I'll think about it on the, on the way I get in the car and then getting into the office and, and trying to get that done. When I say it took a weight off my back, it, it, it truly did. And when you spend a few minutes every week and day doing this, it, it just opens up everything. It does yeah. open up the portals to creativity. Yeah. When you talk about a novel, when you talk about anything creative-based, if you're bogged down with all these things you have to do and you have no way of, of putting them into logical yeah. categories and, and figuring out what is the most important thing to yeah. do this week and, and then using your inbox like a to-do list, oh, I'm just going to keep all this shit in my inbox and then I'm going to go through my inbox all the time and figure out what's there I yeah. need to do. No. And he gives you ways of creating folders in your Outlook, in your Mac Mail, whatever it is you use to keep these things segregated. Yeah. And when and you, 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 you know what's also great, I'm sorry, is that yeah. – there's always an urgent thing. There's always something that comes up on Tuesday or Wednesday or whenever. And this type of logic and this type of preparation helps you prepare and also carve out the time when you oh. got the fire drill, when you got the client, yep. when you got the, the last minute thing. Uh, I know the, the thing that I just dread about those last minute client projects is I had all this other stuff to do. Yeah. And now I'm overwhelmed and I'm feeling bad and now I'm falling behind on everything. Well, and I had clients walk in the door and they had emergencies. They had things that I needed to get something drafted right away. TROs, family law stuff, there's yeah. emergencies there quite a bit. And because I was so organized, I knew exactly what I had to do that day yeah. and that week. And I knew that, yes, I could drop everything for you and, and get the paralegal in here and let's start drafting TROs right. and let's start getting documents and we'll get them down to the courthouse to get filed and get a hearing date and all this stuff. Because I was so organized that I was checking stuff off the list so rapidly, yeah. I was literally getting things done in half the time it would normally take me because I yeah. wasn't scattered. My brain wasn't scattered with all of these millions of things. So when I say you can get back, well, I, I did it for me, and, and this is up to you, and I can't promise you anything, but the fact is, when I say I went from 10 to 12 hours a day down to five or four, I'm being dead serious with you. Yeah. And that was a, a combination of getting super organized, knowing exactly what I had to do, being present, being yeah. super present in the moment. Do not disturb time. All the stuff I write about in Raising the Bar. All those things, when you put them together and you operate your life from that place, you can cut down the time it takes you to do stuff tremendously because you're not That's right. looking at text messages and you're not That's right. reading emails every five seconds. And, and I went from reading emails every, every time the Bing came in, I would read an email and then I would say, no, I'm going to check email at 9 a.m. first thing in the morning after my daily plan is done, 11, 2, and 5. That's right. it. There is yeah. no reason why you should be checking your email every five minutes. And this is why we work more hours than we need to. Right. So to wrap this up, yeah. stop using your inbox as a to-do list. Do a brain dump. Get yourself organized in a weekly plan and then daily. Why would you want to do this? Because you're going to get stuff done a lot faster. You're going to get stuff done in a timely fashion. You will free yourself up to have more time and life balance to be with the people and do the things that mean the most to you in life, whether it's your family, whether it's going hiking with your dog, canoeing, whatever, tennis, golf, whatever that is. Yeah. Isn't that what we want more of is to not be at work so much and free up time to do what we really love doing? Now, when you love what you do in your career, because I don't like to call it work anymore. Casey and I don't work anymore. We, we love what we do. 
I don't call that work. I love doing this stuff. I love being on this podcast with you guys because I know even as simplistic as some of these ideas are, 99.9% of you are not doing them. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. But we're here opening you up to these things. And this is what our mission is, is to share these ideas with you. And so what is most important to you? That's a question you should ask yourself. Yeah. And if you don't implement these things, don't come crying to me saying, I don't have enough time. And I don't know. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> yeah. And I joke to a certain extent, but I'm very serious. The key with anything in life, when you learn something, is if it makes sense to you, try it out. That's Implement right. it. If I would have never implemented these things that I've learned, I would never be here talking to you because I would have never had the opportunity to be able to write a book while I was still practicing yeah. law and work my way out of the, of the career and have businesses that continue to operate without me as long as those businesses want to continue and those people that are running those businesses yeah. want to continue to have them, that's up to them now. But I set it up so that it did run without me with, with a lot of these principles we're talking about. And so I think that's the point that exists. I've learned. Yeah. And the point that I've learned from a lot of this is not, the question is not how do I find the time to do this or the statement is, and I don't have the time. The point is how do I not, uh, how do I not have the time? Right. How do I, how do I not, why would I not want to focus on some of this? Uh, as you take the time to think this through, um, and, you know, really uh, go back to the source, really uh, look at this. Uh, what it does is it saves time. And I think for many of us, we don't believe it. We don't think it can happen. Um, or we may even yeah. feel guilty. Like, wait a minute, you're going to save me time and I can go spend time with my kids. One, I don't believe it can happen. And two, if I am spending time with my kids on a, if I call uh, end Friday on a short day, I don't, I don't feel right. I should be working. And, and yeah. it's not only a tactics that Adam's talking about here to help, but this is um, in spirit with what we talk about on this podcast, a bigger shift. This is a bigger mindset shift. These are different beliefs we're after. Um, we all deserve more free time. We don't need, you know, working nonstop and a workaholic and taking up our whole life um, isn't necessarily normal. There's a new normal out there. And so if anyone's kind of struggling and not connecting with what we're saying here, it could be you don't think you have the time. It also could be indicative of the fact that, you know, there's a mindset shift we're, we're pushing you to make that we think would be really positive for you. Yeah, exactly. And there's another aspect to this that I didn't say, and, and we'll wrap this episode up with this idea. When I went to from, you know, 10, 12 hours a day to four or five hours a day, um, and I'm focused on what I want to do, what I love doing. One of the things I realized is I started having time to read and learn about marketing and learn about the business aspects of the law. Yeah. And then what I started doing at that point was instead of working in the business, wrapped up in all the crap and all of the day-to-day -day drama and the, the stuff that someone else should have been doing, and I'm, I'm, I'm working four hours a day, I took a couple hours of that day and I started working on the business. And that Dude. grew my income exponentially because that's where the creativity comes in you're talking about, Casey. That's where the creativity comes in around what can I do to grow my sphere of influence? What can I do to find more people that can refer us business so that I can hire more staff to do yeah. all this business so that I can hire uh, more paralegals and, and associate attorneys, which we had over the years, to then make more money, help more people. I didn't work anymore because I had this whole system set That's up. Right. And so this is why you want to do this so that you can work on your business for some time every week, grow that business to whatever it is you want to have it to be, or keep it the same way it is and go out and play golf. Yeah. Then what I did is I had time to go play golf, which after a while I was like, what, what is this game? It's, I, didn't, I didn't really enjoy it all that much, but I was taking out people that were in my sphere of influence that were referring me business. I took bankers out. I took hedge fund guys out that then I became their general counsel. And man, it just created so many more opportunities to where before I was locked in the office forever doing the mundane and yeah. the shit that I shouldn't have been doing. And to the point where I was able to then work on the business and then do stuff that I really enjoyed, which was some writing, some 
uh, me more meditation, some travel. You know, we were able to go away for yeah. weeks on end to Europe many, many years in a row, which I never had time to do before. So this stuff will work if you work it. It's the interchange. It's the right. looking at the habits that you've set up and breaking those habits and instilling new ones. And it, it's not a osmosis type of change. It takes you getting real with yourself and saying, what do I want yeah. for my life? This is the reason I wrote my book and books that are coming. This is the reason I'm starting Esquire Academy and all the things that I'm doing yeah. because there are so many ideas that we don't even know are possible and outcomes that we have no clue are available to us. I didn't know these things until I started to yeah. ask the questions. And so with you being here on this podcast with us, you're opening yourself up to this information. What are you going to do with it? That's my question yeah. to everybody out there. What are you going to do with this information now that you're getting these little tips and tidbits? What are you going to do with it? Are you just going to listen and not take it and make notes? Most of the books I read now, I sit and outline like I'm studying for a class yeah. because the stuff that I'm finding now is so deep and profound and amazing. I'm breaking it down and saying, Oh my God, I want to learn this, Casey. Yeah. I want to know this stuff at a level of, of perfection, just yeah. wanting it to be part of me. And so this is your first step here is getting these kind of books. And the first one should be getting things done. And, and if you have any interest in raising the bar, I think that's part of the process too. It's why I wrote it. It's why I wrote it for you. I wrote it for Casey. I wrote it for me because that's a, a guidebook that I use and I continue yeah. to use the principles in that book. And I don't, like I said before, buy the book or not, it's not a big deal to me, but I just want to help you however I can. And if the only thing you do is watch this podcast and never follow Casey and never follow me other than this, you will get a tremendous amount of value. You'll get a tremendous amount of ideas, but go now and implement them into your life. Yeah. That's all I got to say today, Casey. Great steps. Uh, uh you push me on this. Uh, we encourage everyone and push them to do it. One thing that I uh, encourage people to do is to not get overwhelmed by having to do something. Take a baby step. That's all. Take a small baby step. Uh, the great thing about a baby step, whether it's just doing a five-minute brain dump, whether it's uh, you know looking into other programs, whether it's going like we talked about in episode one, the exercises, the, the key number one in our last episode to talk about what it is, why you actually went to law school. It's because when you take a baby step, it's easy to do. It's not overwhelming. It builds confidence. And you know what? If you fail at it, if you don't do right at it, we're such perfectionists. That's okay. You don't fall that far. You can easily pick yourself back up. You haven't invested everything in it. You haven't told the whole world you're doing it. It's a quick baby step. So a lot of the stuff that we're talking, the whole reason we've created this podcast is to, is to help. And so I just say, bite off a little bit, build momentum, build confidence. So um, everybody, thank you. Yes. Uh, this has been about uh, getting organized. Um, please look at getting things done. Um, think about the steps that, that we talked about. Check our last episode around um, really diving into what's informing all of this, which is why we went to law school in the first place. And then check out our next episode where we really get tactical. We get in the weeds around um, how to grow your business. Uh, how to market, how to network. Uh, even for the introverts out there, there are a lot of great ideas that Adam is going to flesh out uh, that can help automate things, that can help uh, uh, be scalable to build your business, regardless of whether you're, you're on your own, whether you're in a firm or, or doing something else. So um, Adam, any parting thoughts before we say thanks to everybody? The only thing we can end with, and Casey calls it baby steps, but there's a principle in uh, Japan and they call it Kaizen. And it's really one of the reasons why the Japanese automakers have kicked the asses of pretty much most automakers in the world, including the Germans to a certain extent, but mostly the Americans, it, because that is the key is to take baby steps and don't try to do everything in the same uh, span of time. Break them off into small chunks. And there's genius in this baby step slash Kaizen idea. And it's really where huge, massive change comes in your life, in, in yeah. government, in communities, where we start to do small things that add up in the long run. And so when he talks about baby steps, it's true. Don't bite off more than you can chew on any of the things that I'm talking about. And it's important that he brought this up because 
um, there's a lot of tips we're giving you here. And so start with something and take those steps and continue them. Create new habits. That's That's really it. And so thank you for being with us in the next episode. As Casey said, we're going to talk about becoming a lifelong learner. And I want to share with you more about what I've learned as a student of life, as I call it, uh, in uh, various aspects and why you should maybe take on that role and habit of listening to books or reading and and, uh, listening to different types of podcasts that you may be interested in. So we appreciate you here. Join us on the community at loveorleavepodcast.com. You can get access to all of these episodes, including some special webinars and live training that we do along the way, uh, transcripts and all kinds of stuff, as we've said before. But we appreciate you being here, and we know you're kindred spirits to us, and um, we're glad to have you as part of this community, however that means, whatever that means to you. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.